Well, welcome back to my YouTube channel. Uh, I haven't posted anything in the last four or five months. I've uh, been busy making some large panels for uh, some of the neighbors in the area. So anyway, today we're going to get back and we're going to build some small projects. Uh, the one we're going to build today is going to be, uh, we're going to make a clock. Uh, so it's going to be a leaded glass clock. And uh, we're going to put it on a uh, an octagon, which is eight-sided. Uh, I have no plans for this, so we're going to draw it up as we get started here. I've kind of just been thinking about this in my mind, and so we'll see what we come up with. So anyway, if you're familiar with uh, my, my particular system, you're watching my other videos, uh, in the center here, we're going to put the clock. And uh, we're going to use, uh, instead of a compass, we're going to use this ruler that I've made. It uh, has a pivot point here, and in every inch it's drilled out. And then every quarter inch it's drilled out. So we can uh, just stick it on a pivot point and come around and make a perfect circle. Uh, I made this because uh, for a while there I was making some great big projects, big circles. They were 24 inches in diameter. And uh, obviously I didn't have a compass that big. So I could just take this down and go out to the 12 inch where, area and make a big 24 inch circle. So it's an inexpensive uh, uh, plastic ruler. So it works really nice. Uh, my board itself, if you looked at it real close, right here, it's got a it's got a little hole drilled in it. That's a pivot point for us, and I'm just going to set this right here, our drawing board. I guess I better make it up here so I can get my T-square in there. Let's see here, that'll work right there. So what we're going to do, we're going to take a piece of, of just regular white paper and I'm going to find the center of this piece of paper and the way I'm going to do that is I'm just going to take a, uh, a straight edge and I'm just going to go from corner to corner here real quick right here in the in the center here it's going to go from there to here that gives me my center point I'm going to take my push pin here. I'm going to push it right in here. And then I'm going to take and sit that. I'm going to roll this back here. And I push this right into this pivot point right here. And from there, I'm going to take and straighten up my paper. Just like that. I'm going to just take some masking tape and tape it down. But I'm only going to tape it at the top right now because I'm going to make a pattern for this and I'm going to make at the top by just putting some little pieces of masking tape at the top here let me reposition this camera just a little bit it looks like we're going out of the out of the uh, area here so I'll be right back all right we're back we got that straightened up a little bit I just wanted you to see what I was doing out here at the top here and I kind of had you cut off so we're creating a hinge effect here. So now to make a pattern, we're going to take and we're going to just pull this pin out. I'm going to hinge that back and I'm going to make a pattern. I'm going to use just a regular manila folder. I'm just going to set it right in here. I'm going to put a couple of pieces of masking tape down one on each side. You could probably make this project uh, without a pattern if you just wanted to kind of draw something out and, and uh, cut the glass. But we're going to use some opaque glass on this, so we kind of need a pattern for around the circle here. After you get your pattern paper down, you take a couple pieces of carbon paper. Remember, carbon side goes down. If you don't put it down, it'll, it'll end up printing out here on the back of your uh, your pad or your pattern paper or your drawing paper and uh, that won't do you much good up there so we're going to pull that down like that and we're going to pull this back over and we're going to pull all any air out from underneath it we're going to tape it down real quick i like to tape it down pretty good because i don't want it to move so my all my edges are going to be square now we're going to come back here in the middle, bring our little square back or our, our little uh, ruler back in here, put our pin in here, and we're going to go right in the middle there. I have a little socket wrench right here that happens to fit this pretty good. I push it down. So now 
we're going to take and uh, we need uh, for the clock I'll show you the clock it's right here this is the unit we're going to use uh, it's a uh, battery operated uses a double a battery in here uh, has these little metal prongs here there are in a so from point to point here is three and a half inches. So we're going to make a circle and those will push down inside the circle to lock the clock in. Uh, you could uh, you could also if you didn't want to didn't want to fool around with these, you could also uh, put some silicon seal on here and seal the clock to our finished product. But uh, we're going to we're going to push them through there. So we need to make a circle in the middle three and a half inches. So uh, here's the, here's one inch, which would equal two inches in the circle. Here's one and a half, which would be three. So we need to be one and three quarter. So all we do is push our, put our pencil in here and we just make our circle go right around like that. That gives us our, that didn't come out very good. There we go. Put that right there. Straighten this back up. And now what I'm going to do, I'm going to come in here and I'm going to take in Draw some up lines up here. Here. Just to give us an idea where our project's going here. So now, I think what I'm going to do, I'm going to make this uh, a... Uh, Oh, maybe uh, 10 and a half inches. So like I said, I'm just thinking about as I make this, how I'm going to do that. So 10 and a half inches. So that means I'm going to come down here to five and a quarter. Right from the center point. Five and a quarter. This will create a box. Because the octagon is eight-sided, and so to create that, to create that, we're just going to uh, create a box. Just like this. Since this T-square is not long enough to go all the way across, I kind of have to cheat here and go up here on the top and extend it on. So if you have any drafting teachers out there, they're probably having a heart attack right now. I apologize to you. So we're going to move this up here. But what we're, what we're looking for is just to create a box here, around here. This needs to go up just a little bit to get this in here. Okay, so there's our box. It's 10 and one half inches from here to here. 10 and one half inches from here to there. Now, we need to figure, we need to figure out how big we're going to make this octagon. Um, for some reason, I think that uh, four and a half inches kind of kind of feels just about right. And I'm just guessing at that, but we're gonna that's what we're going to use. So we need to go to half of four and a half. Is two and a quarter. So we'll make a mark here to four and a half. Come out here two and a quarter to four and a half. We'll just measure them all here. Two and a quarter to four and a half. And we'll come up to this top one here. Two and a quarter, four and a half, right there. Now these angles are at a 45 degree. So if you have a if you have a 45 degree triangle like this one, you can put your T-square in here like this, set it on here, and if we did this right, these two points from here to there should line up. So we just take and make our make our uh, little mark right there. We'll turn this over here on this side. We can do the same thing.
So that's to get us the start. Now up here we're going to do the same thing. But say you don't have a you don't have a 45 degree triangle, but you'd like to try this project. Just take where we've marked this here with your straight edge. Let me pull this back down just a little bit. Just take your straight edge and go point to point right here like this. And that gives you the same effect. There we go. Now I'm going to draw a, uh, a final line across here from point to point. This is going to be one of our lead lines. I'm going to come in here and get this done right like that. Come on down. So our clock, our clock, so th this is going to, these are be each be a single piece of glass around here. And our clock is going to sit here in the middle of it like that. So this looks a little bit plain to me right here. So uh, since this is one of my harebrained ideas that I'm just dreaming up as I go along, I think I'm going to put a border inside this, uh, maybe three quarters of an inch. So I could measure it out to three quarters of an inch. Or if you watch some of my other videos, you know I use this little aluminum uh, piece of uh, angle iron or angle aluminum. Across the back here, it's three quarter wide, half inch here. So I'm just going to use that. And I'm basically going to cheat just a little bit. I'm going to set it in here right against my line. And I'm going to come from here all the way down to here. I'm going to go all the way around it and that'll create a border for us inside there. So this just gives it, uh, makes it uh, look a little fancier. Kind of look kind of plain just the way it was. Now you could do your own design, anything you wanted to do with this. Uh, the uh, clocks are fairly inexpensive. That particular one is from Amazon. Uh, they've got a whole bunch of them. So uh, if you're considering making some clocks that make a nice gift, uh, you can look on Amazon or any other of the places that you, uh, that you frequently buy things. And uh, you probably can find a, a whole bunch of these clocks. And we'll do this last one over here. So we got all our all our borders in now. There we go. So that that kind of dressed that up a little bit. And that kind of closed the it kind of closed this area down here just a little bit. These aren't quite so large because the clock's not that big. The clock measures four and a half inches across. Actually, four point three, but we'll call it four and a half. So that's going to be our project. Uh, all of these lines out here. We don't need any of those. What I'll do is I'll go offline. I'll clean this uh, drawing all up. And I will take and darken in the, the, where the lead lines are going to go. And uh, we'll, be, uh, we'll be ready to, to make the project. Right here, these lines aren't going to be here either. So we're going to take those all out of there. So we'll be back uh, in a little while. And I'll have this drawing all uh, darkened in. And uh, we'll get ready to put our octagon clock together. I'm going to use some uh, a purple and black glass in here that someone gave me. It's a, kind of a different looking glass. I've uh, Somebody gave it to me and I, I didn't know what I was going to do with it. But this might be a good project for it. In these corners right now, I've got some uh, gold colored anodized or, or iridescent glass I'm going to put in there. And in here I'm going to put in some clear uh, uh, Iridescent. It's called it's called granite, and it's kind of a, a nice uh, clear iridescent. So if this hangs on the wall, that's what we're thinking about doing. It's hanging on the wall. The color of the wall will come through these colors right here. So it should give us a a, a nice looking uh, uh, project. Uh, on the back here, we'll put a hanger. Probably the hanger will go across here and down around because I don't want it to be in front of the uh, clear area there. So when I come back, we'll be uh, ready to uh, have this all blackened in here, showing our where our uh, 
lead lines are going to be and we'll get ready to start we're going to start right here in the middle and then we'll build it out and like i said before if you've watched some of my other videos this cut and stack idea is uh something that i just dreamed up so there's no real plan for this so we'll just keep letting it go out to wherever it goes we will check it to make sure it's square as we build it because we don't want it to get crooked and because uh, when you hang it on the wall it certainly will show so we'll be back uh, when we get this all ready to go and uh, we'll move on from there so it's uh, good to be back to uh, work on some of these projects uh, like i said before at the end of this video uh, we're going to post uh, some of those bigger projects that i've been working on uh, so if you want to hang on and watch the whole video right at the end of it uh, there'll be about uh, oh maybe about three or four minutes of uh, projects that we've been working on uh, for the last four or five months all right we'll be back in a minute well, I want to come back in here real quick here. I forgot to show you uh, the pattern that we made here. So anyway, I'm just going to show you what's going on. We could number of these if we want to. Theoretically, if we did this drawing properly, all of these should be the same size. But we may number them on the other drawing. So to get to, get to our pieces here, we're going to just take our tape off here on the bottom. And we'll take in hinge this back this is the belt this is this is the drawing that we're going to build right on top of so i'll attach that to my my homosoid board to build on we'll move our so here's our project right here so this is what we're going to be using uh, as our pattern and uh, when we cut this out we're going to use a pair of pattern shears pattern shears are designed to cut out a little bit of a piece of a pattern out of here so that you can uh, allow for the uh, lead seam because the lead itself continues to add or add to the uh, project so for in between the in between here we're going to be running what they call h came and the h came if you think about it makes the letter h and it has a channel in the middle which is called the heart and that part uh, will as you add that to your project around makes your project grow so what we'll do is we'll cut the pattern with a pair of sh pattern shears I'll show you what they look like. It just looked like this, a regular uh, cut like a pair of scissors. And when you cut with them, you take it like this, and when you cut with them, what it does is it cuts open a area here, which is open. And that's the piece where your lead cane would go in here. So when you put your, when you get ready to lead this, if you could imagine this, this lead cane will slide in between here like this, and your project doesn't grow to be a bigger, much bigger than than uh, than you planned on. So we'll go ahead and, and we'll cut all these pieces out here. I'm not going to really cut these border pieces because they're just standard three quarter inch wide. Uh, the diamonds in the middle look a little bit hard to do. But they're quite easy. I'll show you how we're going to do those. So I'll be back in a minute. We'll have this uh, all uh, inked up so that we can uh, see exactly where we're going to go from there. And uh, this should uh, make us a pretty nice little project. Okay, well, we're back. We got our pattern all cut out now. So I did go ahead and number them just in case there's some of them are a little bit different in sizes. So there's a number of, way to, number of ways to build this. And uh, so if you have a, a way that you like best, then go ahead and, and use that if you want to try this. Uh, we're going to st I'm going to start in the middle here and build out. Uh, some people may like to take and make a form, put a piece of form wood in here, on a <clears throat> create a 90 degree here, start down here at the bottom and build going from the corner out. That's a more traditional way to do that. But in this case, since we're doing what I call the cut and stack, where we're just going to cut it and put it in place, uh, we don't care if it grows a little bit. So we don't need to really put a form on it to do that. We will check it for squareness when we get it, when we get when we get all the pieces together. But right now, we're just going to go ahead and start with the center, and we'll build out from it, and we'll go from there. So anyway, we can move all these pieces out of the way. We don't need those. I darkened this all in so you can see how nice it looks. So our center section where our clock's going to go is three and a half inches across. So if you watch any of my other videos, I've always used some kind of a, a, a helper to, to get that so it's nice and round. In this case here, I've got a, 
an old tub here that's had whitening in it for uh, finishing off the windows. Right across the back of this, it happens to be exactly three and a half inches. It's what we need. We're going to use a piece of u came here. This is a quarter inch u came. We're going to put the smooth side into this into the into here so that our glass can slide into it as we go around. And what we're going to do with that, we're going to take it right like this. And we're just going to set it on here and we're just going to take and we're going to bring it around. Just like this. Bring it on around. Hold on to it. And I'm going to go, I'm going to go across the top of it here. I'm going to go over. See if you can watch it. I'm going to go past where they where they line up like this right here. And then I'm going to mark them with my felt tip or with a with a sharpie. And I'm going to mark those like right here and right here. Then I'm going to take that off. And I'm going to take what they call lead shears or lead dikes. These are for cutting the lead. The smooth side here cuts a smooth side. Uh, the bevel side here cuts a 45, so we don't want to do that. So we want to go smooth side here. And we'll turn those over and we'll go smooth side here. And these two pieces are going to go together to create our circle. Now, I dropped it down on the uh, from from right exactly three and a half, I dropped it down a little bit because I noticed on our project that the clock itself is exactly three and a half. So I want to make this just a little bit bigger. So I'll get my ruler and just check it here. That's going to be like three and nine sixteenths, which is like a sixteenth bigger. So that creates our circle for us. Uh, we can take this circle now. And uh, we can bring it over here. I'll bring it right here. And I'm going to bring it together right like that. Uh, if you watch my other uh, videos too, uh, you notice we're building on a homozoite board. It's a sound deadening product. It's a very dense board. And I'm using 5 8 inch push pins. They look like this. They have an aluminum lid on them or an aluminum top. And they have a 5 8 inch metal so what I'm going to do here, I'm going to cheat and I'm going to actually solder this together right here so that we don't have to worry about it coming apart. And the way I'm going to do that is I'm going to take my push pins here, just kind of set up a real quick dummy here and come on around like that. Push this together. I'm not going to force it because I want it to stay round. Bring that right together, right there. Just move it around here. Oops, push that in a little bit too far. I want to be sure that it lines up perfect. So you want to take your time here a little bit. Make sure you get it nice and nice and round. After we solder it here, we'll stick it back over our container here, and that'll that'll make sure that it stays round for us. So we'll show you that when we get this done. It needs to come out here just a little bit, right here. Okay, that's good. I'm using a uh, liquid flux for my soldering. So we're just taking, we'll flux that just a little bit right there. And I'm not going to solder this really, really tight. I'm just going to take my siren iron. Um, I'm using a Waller 100 with a 700 degree tip. I'm using 6040 solder. I like that. It flows nice. I'm just going to tin my iron just a little bit like that. And I'm just going to take and set it right here. And I'm just going to tack that just like that. Now I can take this off, pull all these pins out of here. I can turn this back over and I'm going to do the same thing here. Just going to give it just a little tiny solder joint. 
Here again, just tin your iron just a little bit. That's all, we, that's all that we want to do with that right now. Now, we can take our circle and we'll put it back over here and we'll just push it down on here. And that will make it go perfectly, perfectly round for us. So that'll work out very nice for us. So just push it down on there until it gets nice and snug and make sure it's kind of lined up straight here so it's not going off one side or the other. Like I said before, there's all kinds of props around the house or around your uh, studio or your shop, wherever you're, wherever you're making these projects. Uh, and uh, you can find something that always will fit wherever you want to make it go. Uh, I've used everything from pie pans to uh, cooking utensils to uh, mason jars to make circles or make different sizes. So that goes on there like that. And then when we pull that off, we're going to set this in here just like this. And then what we're going to do, we're going to put this joint here right with one of these joints. So when we solder this up for good, that'll be uh, completely invisible. You won't be able to see that at all. So I'm going to just going to eyeball this right here in the center as close as possible. That looks pretty good right there. I'm going to come in here with my pins and in every joint here, I'm going to put Put a pin in here, kind of keep an eye on it here. Kind of want to keep it as good as in the center as possible. Here we go. If this moves away from here, where you want, we can always rotate it around as we, uh, as we get ready to put it together. So this gives you an idea of what we're going to do here with this. A number of people have asked me about the homosoid board that I'm building on. Uh, you can get that uh, in any, usually any old fashioned lumber yard that, uh, that will order it for you. Some of them even have it. Uh, it's, a, it's a nice board to build on. It's uh, pretty much fireproof. It, uh, the the uh, soldering iron doesn't bother it if it gets on it and gets too hot. And uh, it makes the stick pins work real well. Uh, I know a lot of people you'll see on videos are using the horseshoe nails and all that type of thing. Uh, that's pretty pretty much old school. This is kind of the, the new way to do it. When I first started back in the 1970s, I was using horseshoes and so forth. And uh, uh, a lady introduced me to these pins and, uh, and this homosoid board. And I've been using that for the last, uh, probably the last 25 years or so. These pins come in two different lengths. This one here is 5 eighths of an inch. There is a half inch one. If you're going to buy, then try to find the 5 eighths in ones because it gives you just a little bit more uh, strength when you're, when you're putting your pins together. So it works out pretty nice. So now what I'm going to do is I got our, we got all of our uh, pattern pieces cut here, all these guys right here. And uh, they, they'll, they will sit in here like this. We can, so, so our pattern piece is going to go inside our came like that and you'll get a you'll get a look on how this is going to how this is going to look when we get ready to go here so we'll put these all we don't need to do this I, i'm going to just do this for show and tell so you can kind of see what this is going to how this is going to work like i said here again this is for beginners uh, if you if you've been doing leaded glass for a long time you're going to find this is a pretty simple project and that's all right. Um, I like to like to do a lot of stuff for beginners. I like to help people get started, and uh, you can't uh, you can't get too complicated too quick. And like I said before, uh, all of these pieces are theoretically pretty close to the same size. You could use just one pattern. This is the only uh, cut here, which is an inside curve that always gives people trouble. This one's very flat. So you shouldn't have any trouble just cutting that with a with a regular glass cutter or score it with a glass cutter and use your running pliers or a pair of grossing pliers and take that out. And we'll show you that when we get ready to, to cut the pieces to go in here. So that's there's our there's our center section now with our pattern back in place here. 
we'll get our we'll get our clock out. Our clocks are going to go right right in here, like so. So I think that'll give us a nice uh, look. These dimensions that I've used here, they're just at random. I just picked them uh, out of the clear blue sky. You can make this any size you want. You could make these on points. Uh, you can make a star out of this. You can do a number of things with this idea. So keep this in mind. Like I said, these are from Amazon. Uh, they measure 4.3, which is, which is actually probably about uh, 4 and 3 eighths of an inch. Uh, they, they do it in millimeters. So uh, you can just ask... Uh, your uh, friendly phone, uh, how many millimeters are in so many inches, and that'll give you a good idea of what size you're really looking at. They make a lot of these. Some of them are real little, uh, but uh, this is a nice size for this project. Like I say, it's going to hang on the wall, so we'll put a hanger on the back side of it so we can hang it up on the wall. So when I come back, we'll start to cut some pieces for this, and uh, we'll show you how we're going to do that. And then we'll go ahead and start to put it together, and we'll let it up. I didn't cut the patterns for this out here because, like I said, it's going to be a straight three-quarter inch cut. These here, to cut these are real simple. You use a 45-degree angle to cut these, and uh, they go together real nice. They'll give you, they look fancy or they look hard to do, but they're real, real simple. So we'll show you how that goes uh, when we get ready to put it together. So we'll be back in a minute, and we'll get ready to put some glass in here, and I'll show you how it's going to look when it gets done. Okay, we're back. We've got our drawing all taped down to our table now. So we got all our pattern pieces cut. So we're going to go ahead and uh, start to cut our glass. Uh, this is the glass we're going to use. It's, uh, it's got a rough side here and it's got a smooth side here. You want to cut on the smooth side. Uh, because of the rough side, uh, I'm going to put a, just a piece of uh, terry cloth, uh, old uh, bath towel down on my cutting board. This is a hard cutting surface. I want it to be a little softer to take up for the the valleys that are in valleys and the high peaks that are in this glass so that I don't break it when I go to cut it. So uh, what we're going to do here, let's move these things out of the way here. We've got our running pliers. We've got our glass cutter. Keep in mind the glass cutter, the legs that support the cutting or scoring wheel are about a sixteenth of an inch wide. So when we get ready to, to uh, cut our pattern, we'll want to move our, our straight edge in just a little bit. We're just going to use a regular uh, plastic ruler here. And we're just going to put the pattern down with a glue stick. So let's bring it in our, uh, our towel here real quick. This is just an old towel that, uh, that we've cut up and used for uh, several different things, cleaning and wiping the glass down. We just put that there. I'll give it just a little bit of a cushion. Now we're going to set this right here. And since we're going to, we drew this. This, is a, this shows the up piece of it, but since we're going to put it on the back side, we need to turn it over when we, when we glue it down. So uh, keep that in mind so that it comes out exactly to match whatever your drawing is. If you don't turn it over and you have a little bit of a difference in your drawing, uh, it won't quite line up just right. So we're going to set this in here like this. I'm going to pull that right down to there. Just let it set down here. We're going to come over here and we'll just take our straight edge. We'll line it up on here about a sixteenth of an inch away from the uh, pattern piece. And we're just going to take and cut it straight down here. Then we're going to take our running pliers. Go right on the score line. And you're going to take and snap it away. Do the same thing here. Just like that. If you don't want to, if you don't want to mess around with this with the straight edge, uh, if you're careful, you can just put your cutting the wheel on the cutter right up against this, and just go down here by itself and cut it like that. Uh, you can get it to where you want it to go. Trim this off. If you get if you get one, it breaks out like that. Uh, use your grosing pliers. That's these little guys right here. Bring it right up to your cut line, hold it down, and just kind of pull it away like that and pull it apart. 
that'll get you your get your piece out of there. We're gonna fa we're gonna finish these edges up with a uh, on our grinder, so we'll smooth them up a little bit. Okay, for our inner cut here now, we're just gonna take and we're just gonna take our glass cutter and we're just gonna go right around our pattern here. We're gonna insert this right here, and we're gonna snap that out, and that gives us our inner cut for our project. So anyway, I just wanted to show you that real quick. Uh, so I'll go offline. I'll get all the rest of the pieces cut. And then we'll come back and we'll show you how we're going to assemble this. So that just gives you an idea how to cut these pieces so that uh, they come out the way you want them. All right, we'll be right back. Okay, we got all our pieces cut now. So we're going to start right here at the top here. And uh, we're going to take and we'll put this number uh, eight. I took, I did number them so you can see where they all go. So the number eight piece is going to go right in here. And we got, I cut a piece of H came. This is the one that makes the letter H. And that one's going to fit right in here like that. And then we're going to take here, we're going to take the number one. It's going to fit in here like this. We'll get ready to go here. Kind of get it centered up where you want it. This uh, piece of H came here is just a little bit too long. So we'll take and we'll trim it off here a little bit. You need to allow for the other piece of H came that's going to go across the back here. So if you don't, if you don't leave a little bit of an area there, you're going to be in trouble here with it. So we'll put this one right here. These should line up here at the top. And I'm going to just take a piece of old H came and stick it in here. And I'm going to pin it on both sides here. That'll hold it in place for us. Make sure it's pushed in tight. Right here, we've got a gap right here. So something's not quite right here. This piece here is not quite right where we want it. Kind of looking along this line right here. There we go. So when you start to assemble this, uh, take your time and make sure you get it pushed in where you want it because if you've already pre-cut all the pieces and you don't get them set in there properly, they're, going, they're not going to fit. Okay, so we're gonna take this one right here. This will go right here. Number two is gonna go in here like that. And we're going to take number three here. It's going to sit in here like this. Here again, I'm going to just use the old piece of H came right here. Stick it right here. Push these down. And we're going to take this one here. Insert it right here. Push it in. So, see, make sure it's coming up real nice and tight right here. Uh, take another piece of H came. Push it down in here. This will get it seated real nice, and this will hold it for you, so so it doesn't get away. So now this line here should be right about where that line there is, which it is. That's good, so that helps us keep this in straight line. That one there's gonna go in there, make sure it's back here nice and straight. Let's take and set another piece of H came in here, just an old piece of scrap. And we're gonna go, whoop, then we're gonna go one more here. Make sure your lead doesn't go sideways like that. If it does, it, it'll mess you up. This is going to go in here like this. This should line up right about with that line, which is going to make this be straight. This will be straight. This will be straight. So it looks really nice. Okay, we'll put that one there. But we're going to come over here. We'll just put another little piece of H came right here. And if we've done this right, this last piece should fit in here. So 
So we'll see if we'll see if we did it right here or not. Okay, it's going to push in nice and tight, which we want. Okay, we need one more piece of old H came right here. Whoop, that's the one I want. Here's one right here. Gonna push that in there like that. And we'll use one more pin right here. Okay, so that gets us all in there. We can take all of these out of here now. We don't need these. We're gonna, that creates our center for us. So these will all be soldered up here. Uh, if you want to check that, if you notice, I added a little piece of, of uh, frame wood here so I can check this to see if it's square or not. And uh, so it's a good idea. You can just take, you can just take your, uh, uh, if you have a big uh, square uh, triangle like this one here, you can just take it and take out this right here, push it up against there, and then bring it down and see if it's going to be square, which it is. You want to try to make this as square as possible so when it's hanging on the wall it doesn't have some funny look to it. So the top is nice and square. So we'll see here, we'll put it on the bottom and see how we're doing down here. You can adjust it just a little bit if it's a little bit off, so don't panic. This is going to be a little harder to do because we don't have much room here to work with. That's nice and square right there, so that's good. So we did a good job cutting the glass. And our projects are going to go together nice, so um, you'll get a you'll get a nice end product there. Push that in there. Now for these up and down ones here, uh, you can take the uh, little square that we used to draw the whole thing with. You can set it in here, and uh, you can go ahead and set it in here. I can see right here it's going to be square. And I can see right here it's going to be square. So this is what we want right here. Uh, if this isn't lined up right where your joint is, this is where we soldered it right here. Uh, you can rotate that a little bit. But uh, by the time we solder it, you won't notice it's even there. After I trim this one here, this one here still might be just a little too short now because I would like to have it right up against the edge here. I'll pull that one out and cut one just a little bit longer because I like to have my uh, joints nice and tight. It makes for a better solder joint and we won't have a lot of gaps in it when we do that. So the next thing we're gonna do, uh, I'm gonna go offline, I'm gonna cut some three quarter inch strips of our iridescent granite, which is clear, and then that gold colored iridescent for here. Then I'm gonna come back and I'm gonna show you how we're going to cut uh, these on the 45. These that are run up and down here, uh, they're gonna they're going to go the whole length. I've got some cut right here. And you notice I'm putting these a little bit on a 45, but what I'm going to do, I'm going to cut them longer and I'm going to run them all the way out to here. So, so I'll, I'll need some a little bit longer than that. So uh, we'll run them out, out, out to here and they'll have an angle cut on them so we can come down and then we can put these pieces in here. So we'll be back. Uh, I'll get that cut up and then uh, we'll be ready to put the, uh, the borders on it and the project will be pretty much done here. Uh, it's a pretty quick one. Uh, like I say, it's primarily for a beginner. So uh, if you've been doing this for a long time, you're gonna you're gonna find this one pretty simple. But um, just to just to have some fun with it, and uh, it'll it'll make a really nice, interesting project. Um, pretty happy with the way this glass came out. Like I said, somebody gave this glass to me, and I never knew what I was gonna do with it. So I kind of started with the darker areas uh, down around the, the clock area, and then let it flared her out. Uh, it turned out just so that we got kind of a dark area here and one down here that's pretty good. So it's pretty balanced out. So I think it's going to make a, make a nice looking uh, uh, project for us. So we'll be back uh, when I get the uh, little three quarter inch border cut here. If you wanted to make that an inch, you could do that also. You could just keep spreading it out. Uh, like I said, this is a cut and stack thing. So we could, uh, we could just spread it on out if we wanted to. So I'll be back in a minute with some uh, strips of glass. And we'll go ahead and, and put the border on it. And then we'll get ready to solder it up. All right, we'll be back.
All right, we got all our inside glass done, so now it's time to cut some border glass. And we're just going to make it three quarters of an inch wide. So like I said before, I'm going to use this uh, piece of angle aluminum, which is three quarters inch across here. It's half inch across here. And uh, we'll just put it up against our side gate right here. And we'll go ahead and cut these. Uh, you notice the glass has been marked uh, showing a direction on it. I'm going to uh, lay them all the same. So we'll just cut uh, three quarter inch strips out of this piece of glass right here. And uh, so uh, most of you have probably have cut glass before or scored it and cut it. Uh, we're just going to set it in here like this. And we're going to take this with the, the flatter side here because we'll use that as a guide for our cutter. We just set it in here. And when you're cutting, uh, you can do one or two. We'll move this over here in the middle here a little bit. When you're cutting, um, you can push or pull. It doesn't seem to make any difference. So uh, if, you like to, if you like to push away, you can do that. And then uh, you can take your running pliers, just stick it in here and pop your glass. Here again, because this is a rough side here, you're going to cut on the smooth side. So we're going to need eight of those little guys. So here again, now if we want to go this way, we can go this way. Uh, and it doesn't make, like I said, doesn't make any difference. So I'll cut one more of these and then we'll go and do the other one. By using a nice straight edge with a, gu with a guide like that, uh, you get a nice square cut and you don't have to worry about whether they're going to fit or not. Okay, so I marked this also. Uh, this one here, I want to uh, run all the, our diamonds the same way. Now, this is an interesting piece because the uh, iridescent side is actually the smoother side of the two. So we'll cut it on that side. And uh, we're going to probably need just a couple strips of this. Because we're going to need eight diamonds. So I'll just cut a couple strips here. Now we talked about the diamonds, how they kind of look uh, kind of difficult to do. I'll show you how we're going to do those. Okay, so we got our pieces here. So if you have a mechanical square like this, uh, you can just take and set this in like that, cut a 45. Or if you want to use your, if you want to use your 45 on your, your, your triangle here, you can do that. You can set this in here like this. And you can mark where your 45 is at. Just take your, your uh, pen and mark that and then just go ahead and cut it. Take your straight edge here. Here again. Just set it nice and straight here. Cut it here, take your running pliers and just pop that off. And then just take and set this in here like that on the 45. Put your ruler on here. And this makes your perfect diamond every time. There you go. So there's our diamond right there. So we're gonna need we're gonna need eight of these, so we'll go ahead and cut. A couple more to show you, and then we'll go offline. I'll finish up all of them. And then when we come back, we'll get ready to put the board together. And then we'll put the outside uh, U came around it. And then we'll go ahead and we'll get ready to uh, solder it up. So that was, that was a good guess. I, I thought I'd need about two strips to do this. So there's all our diamonds right there. And we'll cut this last one out of here. So it's a look it looks hard but it's easy. So that's always nice to have. So there's going to be our there's going to be our diamonds in the corner. I'll go ahead and cut this one here and uh, we'll get, come back and we'll get ready to put it together. So uh, as soon as I get that done, uh, we'll uh, put the border all together and put the U came around the outside edge and we'll get ready to solder it up. All right, well, we're back. We're ready to put the uh, border on the outside edge here and I pre-cut some pieces here 
So I'm going to show you a couple little tricks here to make this easier because there's lots of little moving pieces for this. Right here, what we're going to do, we're going to take a piece of our uh, H came and we're going to stick it on here like this. And we're going to take and we're going to pin it right here. And we're going to do the same thing over here. We're going to stick this on here. And this is just to help hold pieces in place. So we'll stick that on there. What that does is that gives us a point for where this piece that goes in here can stop against so that it doesn't, uh, it's not too long or too short. And so from there, we're just going to take this off right here. We're going to take our piece of uh, granite iridescent and it's going to sit in here. So we'll cut a piece of H came on a 45 on each end. It's going to slide in here like this up against this piece right here. Then this is going to go in here like this. It'll fit in here and it should fit flush with this area right here. So this will be the area that goes across here. And we'll just take a little piece of HK. We don't want to put the pins right against our glass because it'll, it'll chip them. So we don't want to do that. So we can do the same thing over here. We put this little piece here to help us here. We'll take and put our... H came down here, which cut on a 45. This goes up right against there. And we'll slide this in here, just like this. And all this does is give us a guide so that, uh, so that we know that this is going to be straight here. And then we'll just take and we'll put the little piece of H came right here to hold that in place. That piece is not going to, that must be the wrong one. Let's see this one here. That's the piece we want in there. I was going to say that one, the other one's a little bit too long. Okay, we'll get that pinned right here. So now across here, we're going to run a long piece of our H came. That's this one here. And it's going to be cut on a 45 also. So it'll go across here like this. Like that. This center one here is going to go in here like this. But before we put that in there, here's another. We'll do another little cheating thing here. We'll take and we'll come on down here now. Just take this piece right like that and run it down further. And we'll take this piece here. That one's not very long. Just get a longer piece. Stick that in there. So right here, we're going to put in our first diamond. So our diamond will sit in here like this. And we'll use this as a guide right there to hold it for us. We'll just take a little piece of U came right here to hold this. And then we're going to use a little bit right here. A little bit of, whoops, turn it the right way. A little bit of our H came to go in here. This is the junction that you, we, want to, we want to be sure is close here. You don't want this sitting way up here like that. So you want it to line up as close as possible. So there we can pull these pins out and we'll put in our piece of clear that runs right here. We can take and put this right here to hold it. We can take and set our piece of H came in here here oops don't push it too far right like that and if we did this right this one here should fit in here which is dead so apparently we're doing fine here so we'll put another piece up here to hold that and that pretty much gets our border started here so we got our two diamonds in here we got these uh, two in here. Now we'll come up here and we'll start on this one. And what we'll do here is we'll do the same thing here. We'll take this piece here now and we're going to take and we'll 
pull it out of here. We'll leave this in here and we'll pull this out also because we don't need that right now. And we'll cut a long piece that goes from here all the way down to here. Well, I'm sorry, all the way down to here. And then we'll work on this area right here. And then we'll fill that all in. So anyway, I'll go offline and do that because it's going to take too long on the video to, to do all that. But this is, a, this is what we're looking for right here where this comes all across here all in one piece. Uh, you can take some more of your U-came if you want to and uh, pull this out and put a bigger piece in here to catch it. And we're just doing that to, to hold it in place so we don't, we don't have a bunch of pieces that start to slip all over before we go ahead and solder it. So you can do that like that one. This one here is long enough. We'll just move it over here. Stick it in here just like that. So we'll come back. We'll, we've got nice joints here and nice joint here. Pull that in just a little bit. Whoops. Stick a little bit longer one here. There we go. So anyway, that kind of gives you an idea how this is going to go together. This one here, we could take this one out and, and we'll put a piece of uh, our uh, U came in here. Let it, let it latch, lap, lap over right there like that. So that's going to be how our outside border is going to get it. We're going to put the U came all the way around. We'll cut it at 45 right here. And then when we solder it, we'll take in there and we'll, when we finish it off, we'll chamfer it over with our, with our nail file and make a nice smooth edges on it all the way around. So I'll go offline. We'll go ahead and fill in the rest of this. And then when we come back, we'll solder it up. All right, we're back. We got the whole border done now. So it's all put together. We've got it held in here with our u came on the sides here. So now we're going to wrap the whole thing uh, with our u came. Uh, there's a couple of ways you could do that. One, you could you could uh, take and uh, start down here with your U-cam and go around it and wrap it and try to get these to, to be fairly sharp. I'm going to take and do it in pieces. If you try to wrap it in one piece, when you get to the corners here, they're going to be rounded. They're not going to look real good. So the way we're going to do that, first thing we're going to do is we'll start right down here at the bottom and we'll take out our little piece of U-cam we've been using just to hold our glass in here. And I pre-cut some uh, U came here. This is the one that makes the letter U. And I'm just going to take it backwards here. And I'm going to put it right against where the corners are right here. Put it there. And I'm going to mark right here where the length of this is. Then I'm going to take this one. And be careful as you move these away because these things will want to move around. I'm going to just take our dikes. I'm going to cut that right there straight up and down. Then I'm going to insert it in here. I'm going to center it right like that. Just like that. Then I'm going to take and just pin it back here with our pins. Then I'm going to come up to this one right here. And I'm going to do the exact same thing. We'll take away our U came that we've been holding that with. And I'm going to take and put a piece in here like this. Right against the, where it starts and where it ends right here. Take and measure it. And then we're going to take and cut it right there. Let's sit that in there just like that. And we'll take and pin it back. Get a couple more pins here. And now in here, what we're going to do, we're going to take another piece of u came and we're going to cut it on a 45. And what I mean by a 45, we're going to take just our dikes that we're going to, just going to take it. We're going to cut it just about like that. Just, we're going to eyeball this until we get it where we want it. And that's going to sit in here like this. And we're going to make it this long right here.
take your time while you're doing this. Uh, just cut it a little bit at a time until we get it to where it fits nice and snug. Make sure your piece hasn't moved out here a little bit. There we go. Make sure everything's where it's supposed to be. There we go. That looks pretty good right there because remember when we solder this, we're going to take our, our uh, emery board and we're going to smooth these corners around. So that'll be work, that'll work out just fine right there. So just go ahead and pin it down. And then I'm going to go ahead, I'll go offline. I'll go all the way back around over here. So over here, we'll go straight down and up here, we'll come across and our ones with our 45s will be on the, on the corners. So that'll give us our corners to come on around. Uh, this little piece is sticking out right here. We're going to take, we'll just take and trim that off just like that. So we can do that here too, just a little bit. Here we go. All right, so we'll be back after I get the rest of them done, and uh, we'll get them we'll get them lined up where we want them. And then what we're going to do is we're going to get ready and we'll go ahead and solder it. So we'll be back in a minute. Okay, so we got the rest of the U came around the outside edges here, so everything lined up good. So we're ready to solder this up. And if you watch any of my other videos, you notice I usually use a stainless steel brush to clean up the joints, make sure there's no oxidation on it. I'm using a classic 100 liquid flux. On my projects, I'm using a 6040 solder, and I'm using a 100 watt Waller uh, soldering iron. It has a 700 degree tip in it, so uh, uh, that's how we're going to get started on it. So first of all, what we'll do is we'll take uh, where all these intersections come together. We'll take and give them a little shine up here. So. When we solder them, uh, we'll get a nice solder joint. The solder will flow real nice and easily. If you got oxidation on your solder joints, uh, you're going to have trouble getting a nice even flow. Here's where we put the circle together. When we get done with that, you won't see that at all, and you won't know where we where we did it. So we get these all kind of shined up here a little bit. Move that one over so we can get to it. You can probably get away without doing this, but I've done it over the years and kind of just stayed with it. It worked good to kind of stay with something if it works for you. Uh, there's all kinds of ways to solder. So um, if you have a, a way that you prefer better than, than what I'm going to show you, um, I go ahead and stick with it if you found one that works good for you. All right, we've got everybody all shined up here. So what we're going to do, we're going to start right here at the uh, outside edges here. And I'm just going to flux these areas up here. We'll start right in this area right here. And what I usually do, I take an old piece of uh, U-came here, and I usually take an, my iron and I take and uh, rub it on here just before I get ready to start to be sure that it doesn't have a heat spike on it. If it has a heat spike on it, when you touch your came, uh, you're liable to burn a hole in it right away. And then you're going to have to try to patch it up or fix it or start over with a new piece of came. So I'm just going to tin my iron right here. Just a little bit. And then I'm going to start it. You can start anywhere you want. I'm just going to take and come down here and just take and start it right there. Here in the joint here, if you go across here, you can do all of these at the same time. That one there didn't quite get enough on it. There we go. Kind of try to like to Take about an eighth of an inch off the edge of my end of my solder to get a nice even bead. I kind of like to try to make them all the same if I can. 
This one here is a little bit shallow right there. We'll put a little bit more up. That looks pretty good. All right, so now we'll go up here and we'll go on around it here. I'll do a couple more of these and then I'll go offline and solder the rest of it. Then I'll turn it over and do the other side also. So you can get a, a, an idea of how to do this. All right, I will come up here and finish this one here. There we go. Okay, so this is where we soldered our, our circle together right here. So now you, can, you can't see where we did that. So I'm going to go offline. I'll finish this up, turn it over and solder it up, and then I'll clean it up a little bit when we come back. Uh, we'll show you how we're going to finish off these edges on the on the corners here and uh, get it all washed up. And uh, then from there, uh, I think I'm going to pantene this black so or charcoal, kind of a charcoal gray. Uh, I think it'll look nice with the uh, with the uh, gold colored uh, clock in it. So uh, we'll come back and uh, we'll finish the project up. All right, we got the backside all soldered up. And uh, so here's so it's all been done i went over the edges here see here how they how nice they came out so i went over all the edges here and finished off our corners so now uh i've taken it and i put it into a bucket of water with a few drops of uh, dawn uh, liquid soap and to polish it up you can see how shiny it is now so now the next thing we're going to do we're going to take and we're going to pantene this and we're going to pantene it uh, uh, black which is kind of a charcoal black color and uh, then we'll insert our, our clock and we'll put a hanger on it. We'll put the hanger on. It's going to solder right across here, around here. Uh, it'll be behind this, so you won't see this. It'll be down here somewhere. Or we can do it down here to hang it on. So it's going to hang on the wall. So that'll be a really interesting project. Let's get the clock and we'll stick it in there real quick. And you're going to get a little kind of a sneak preview of what it's going to look like. So... So our clock is going to stick down in here like this. I guess we should probably get it at 12 o'clock. That'd probably be helpful. There we go. So that's going, to, that's going to go right in there just like that. So that kind of gives you an idea of how this is going to look. It's going to be hanging on the wall. So when I come back, uh, we'll uh, take and uh, shine this up with a uh, Scotch-Brite pad. And we'll go ahead and pantene it black. And then when we're done, we'll put the hanger on the back of it. I'll probably put the hanger on before I pantene it, because once it's pantene, it's a little hard to solder to. So uh, I'll be back in a couple of minutes, and we'll finish the video up, hang it on the wall, and take a couple of pictures of it, and uh, we'll call that a we'll call that a good one. All right, we'll be back. All right, well we're back. Uh, we got it all cleaned up here now, and everything's all shined up. This is on the back side of it right now. This is the top of the clock right here. Uh, this is where our circle came together right down here at the bottom so since this is going to hang on the wall we need some kind of a hanger on here so i've taken some uh, number 12 copper wire just some plain copper wire and i've been us up a little hanger right here uh, we can straighten it up a little bit after we get it soldered on here but it's going to go right in here and, and it's going to go in here uh, primarily because i don't want the hanger sticking above here into this clear area so it's going to go in here like this and I'm going to solder it, solder it along the top here and a couple spot solders down here uh, to give us a, a good strength. Our uh, hanger, will, or we can hang it from right here is where we're going to hang it. So uh, either on a uh, picture hanger or a nail on the wall or whatever, how you're going to hang it, you can hang it there. So to do that, we're just going to take our flux and we're going to take and we're going to flux this up a little bit right here, right here. And right in here 
And then I'm going to take a little stick of wood and I'm going to stick it in here to hold this down because the copper wire when you when you solder it it gets super hot super quick then we're going to take our soldering iron we're going to take and tin, tin it just a little bit like that i'm just going to reach in here like this i'm going to hold it down here and i'm just going to take this over here and i'm going to solder it right just like that i'm going to come over here and do the same thing tin, tin the iron Solder it just like that. And then down in here, just going to tin the iron here. I'm going to reach in here. I can actually solder this right here. Just solder it across there. This gives us some strength. After that uh, hardens, the solder hardens, I'm going to come back here and I'll solder this in a little bit solid. Just to close that off. Kind of finish up your job, make it look like it's a little bit nicer. Uh, if you wanted to, you could solder a couple here. We could come back here. I don't know if I put any flux right there or not. Right here at the top. Right there. So obviously that's not going to be going anywhere. There. Looks pretty nice. We can adjust our hanger if it's a little bit crooked. And just take a pair of pliers, stick it in here, or I can use my grosing pliers. It looks like it needs to be straightened just a little bit. We'll just stick them in here. And we'll just give it just a little bit of a twist. There we go. So that's how we're going to put the hanger on here. Now I'm going to go offline. I'm going to get this ready and we'll pantene it. And uh, then uh, we'll hang it on the wall and we'll put the clock back in it. We'll hang it on the wall and uh, we'll be all done with the project. So we'll be back in a minute. Okay, I washed it all up. I just want to get a really close shot here to show you here where, how our hanger looks right here. So uh, that's what, how it's going to go together. I soldered this up really well here. So the thing, there's no chance of it ever coming loose or falling off the wall. Uh, so that's how that's going to go on there. And uh, like I said before, we'll get it pantene, put the clock back in it, hang it up on the wall, and uh, we'll conclude the video. So I hope you've been watching and then enjoyed the video. Okay, so we're back. We've got our uh, project all cleaned up now, and we got our hanger on here. So now we're going to pantene this, and there's a whole bunch of ways to pantene it. Uh, some people use a tinning brush like this. I've even seen people use Q-tips. A little piece of terry cloth. I'm going to use a, just a plain little sponge in a cup. So there's all kinds of different ways to do it. So uh, we'll show you how we're going to do that. Uh, first of all, we're going to get some uh, put some gloves on to do this, and uh, we'll go from there. I've got it laid down on a piece of plastic here, so I don't uh, get it on my uh, my work board. So I don't want to I don't want to mess that up. So. What we're going to do, we're going to take a, a scotch Bright pad and we're going to shine up this whole area here. And then we'll go ahead and we'll pantene it. So I'll be back in a second. Let me get my gloves on. All right, we've got our gloves on. So we're going to take our uh, scotch Bright pad here. And we're just going to go over these areas here. And you can see we're shining up all the lead and solder areas. And you just want to get this cleaned up really nice. The better job you do on your cleanup, the nicer your pantina will look. If you don't do a good job on that, it'll kind of be kind of splot uh, splotchy looking. And uh, you won't be happy with it. So uh, shine it up really nice and bright if you can. I'm going to turn it over. We'll do the other side real quick. So... This is the front side. I usually pantene that last. Do the do the back side first. Of 
I'm going to go around the edges real quick because I want those to all be black and shiny. Come inside here. Okay, here we go. So our Pantene, uh, I'm using Novocaine. It's a black Pantene. It's for solder and lead. Uh, I usually like to shake it up. And you want to put it in some kind of a container. And you don't want to put too much in there. You, didn't want to, you just want to use enough uh, to uh, do your project. Uh, whatever you do, if you, if you have too much in your cup, don't pour it back into your bottle because it contaminates the whole bottle. So uh, let's just start out with just a little bit here. And we can always add to it. If I was doing a great big panel, I would put this into a spray bottle and spray the whole panel. But since this is such a small project, we're just going to put in a just a about that much right there. And we're just going to take our, in this case, we're going to use a sponge. We're just going to take a little sponge. We're going to dip it in here. And then we're just going to take and we're going to put it on our project. So it just blackens it up as we go here. I'm putting it on fairly liberal. I'm going to go around the edges here real quick so we get the edges nice and black. So this is a thing that uh, here again, uh, all kinds of different ways to do it. People, I've seen people do all kinds of different things with it. Uh, this has uh, worked good for me over the years. So. Uh, kind of stick with it. If you find something that works for you, uh, just go for it. After I physically kind of go over the whole thing uh, with the, uh, the Pantene, just by adding more and more to it, that actually doesn't help... Uh, help darken it at all. Once the uh, chemical reaction starts, it's done. Uh, after I get that done, I have a brush here. And this brush here, I use for the bigger panels and bigger projects, but I'll use it on this one also. And it's designated just for Pantene. And I'm gonna go over this like this. And this will push it into any little nooks and crannies that I may have missed when I'm not um, uh, using the sponge. All right, after you get it all worked in where you're happy with it, I'm going to take a water bottle. And uh, for some reason, I found that uh, real cold water is the best. And I like to take and spray it down now. I don't know whether that sets it or not, but I, it seems to work pretty good. And spray it just with some water. Then you just take an old towel. Just take and kind of wipe it up here, get the worst of it off. After we do the front side, uh, I'm actually going to take this outside and I'm going to uh, wash it down with a, a cup, a, a bucket with a couple drops of uh, Dawn liquid soap in it and uh, scrub it down real good and then hose it off. And then I can come back and we can polish it up. So we're going to turn that over now. Kind of pick up our mess right here okay you can see that some of it's bled through it's actually almost got some of this uh, Pantene on this side so we kind of almost got a two for one here but we're gonna go ahead and we'll just go just a little bit and we'll apply it evenly all around Just so we'll be sure that we get a nice looking job out of it. If you're brand new to this and you're having a little bit of trouble soldering and so forth, this is a great way to kind of hide or some hide some of your uh, solder issues if they're a little bit uh, uh, goopy. Uh, <laughs> this the Pantene kind of hides them a little bit, so. Uh, keep that in mind as you're as you're going along with your projects here. 
Just going to go around the outside edge here again. I'm going to take our brush. I'm going to go over this all real quick here. I had a couple people comment. They asked, how come I don't glaze these projects? Uh, this project is just barely a square foot. I usually don't glaze anything that's a foot and a half or almost up to two feet, especially if it's going to be used inside. It's not going to be outside. It's not going to be, have to be waterproof. Uh, you could go ahead and glaze this if you wanted to, but uh, I don't see a real need for it. All right, so that looks good. We'll spray it down with some water here. Okay, and I'm going to take and wipe it off. All right, I'm going to be right back. We're going to go out and we're going to wipe this down with, a, like I said, a bucket with some Dawn soap in it. We'll scrub it down and hose it off, and then we'll be done with it. All right, so we got it all washed down now. So I'm just going to take an old bath towel here, and I'm going to go over it real quick. Wipe it all down. So you can see it came out nice and black for us. So we just wipe it down and we come over on the front side. I'm going to wipe it down. So now it's looking nice and shiny. So uh, what I'm going to do now, I'm going to spray some wax on it. Uh, I've been using, this is, a, this is something new I've been using. It's kind of a quick wax, and it seems to work quite well. So uh, it comes in a liquid form like this. I'm just going to spray that on here. Just like that. Then I'm going to just take a little piece of terry cloth towel. I'm going to rub it around on here, around our circle area there. And I'm going to let that set for like 10 minutes or so, let it dry just a little bit, and then we'll come back and uh, I'll take and we'll buff it up. And the project will be ready to put the clock in it, and we're all done with it. So we'll get ready to put it in and give it and hang it up. So we'll be back in a minute. All right, we let the wax dry for a little while. So I'm going to come back here and I'm just going to take and take a polished cloth and take and polish this up. You can see it gives everything a really nice look to it. Get oak. So when I come back, uh, we'll go ahead and we'll insert the clock and then we'll be done with the project. So uh, I hope you've been following along. Okay, so we got it all polished up and ready to go. So it's now time to put the clock in here. Uh, these little metal prongs right here, they're going to go through the hole and then they're going to spring out and they'll hold the clock in place. Uh, if you didn't want to do it that way, you could put some little silicon seal around here and just glue it down to this uh, inside circle. But we're going to use these little clips right here. Uh, the uh, top of our project is right here. Here's our hanger right here. So I'm going to take it and find 12 o'clock right here. So we'll make 12 o'clock straight up and down. I'm going to take and push this over here. I'm going to set these first two inside here. Get them in here. It's a little tricky. There we go. Get them in here. And then we're going to take these and we're just going to push them down inside here. There we go. Snapped right in. You can rotate this a little bit because we're not quite 12 o'clock here. 
can rotate it up here till you get to 12 o'clock. There we go. And so that's our finished product right here. Everything looks nice. It looks nice being Pantene. So I hope you've uh, followed along on this. I hope you've enjoyed uh, watching this video. Uh, if you haven't, would you please subscribe to my channel? It's uh, Bill Stone's Stained Glass Creations. And if you uh, stay uh, to the end of this uh, video, uh, you can check out some of the uh, projects I've been working on while I uh, uh, haven't been making any videos. So this is just a real fun little project. We'll make a nice gift. And uh, well, we'll see you on the next video. Thank you very much. Bye-bye.